Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Harrogate series. Harrogate is a large borough, one of the 11 districts of North Yorkshire. It's got 139 civil parishes. Which one are we in in this episode? Welcome back to Harrogate again, everybody. Oh, for a bit of summer sunshine. Look at this sky. It's just a gray, murky color, isn't it, at the moment? And it's probably gonna make this place look really drab and dull. But I tell you, there's nothing drab and dull about this one. Can you hear that? Church bells. I'm right outside the church in this place. And that's kind of important because a church is part of this place's name. This is a, another Kirk place. This is Kirk Deaton. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Kirk Deaton, moated town with a church. This week in Harrogate, we come to Kirk Deaton, a village on the southern fringe of the district, much closer to Weatherby than Harrogate itself. It used to be within the old West Riding of Yorkshire and Weatherby Rural District until 1974. The parish includes both the hamlet of Ingmanthorpe and Weatherby services on the A1M motorway. Kirk Deaton literally means town with a moat and a church. In this case, the church is dedicated to All Saints and it stands on the highest ground the village has, towering above everything in the local area. That is the most architecturally notable building here, but there are plenty more, including the late 18th century Kirk Deaton Hall, a private residence off Mark Lane. Main Street has a mixture of buildings dating from the 16th to the 19th centuries as well, but the village does offer a nice mix property-wise, with some areas of 20th century council housing and infills here and there. As well as the church, Kirk Deaton can boast a pub, a football club and a cricket club, and a recently built village hall. Roger Manners, the 5th Earl of Rutland, was born here, as was Admiral Sir Hugh Palliser, a former Royal Navy officer. Let's get walking around and see what else Kirk Deaton has to tell us. We begin on the A1M, well, just off it in fact. This is Weatherby Services, located at Junction 46. This serves both the village and travellers on the motorway. It opened in September 2008, when improvements were made to the road around that time. It can, though, trace its history back much further than that, to 1993. That's when the first proposals for a new service area on the road came into existence. One came from Welcome Break, which was taken forward by Granada when they took over. The Kirk Deaton plan, as it was known back then, was initially rejected. It would take until 2005 for any sort of planning permission to be granted, and a further two years for those plans to see the light of day. Now, Weatherby is one of the busiest service areas in the country. It features a 126-bedroom hotel, the first to be built at any motor run services in the country, which wasn't a travel lodge. There are 67 HGV spaces, 20 coach spaces, 395 car parking spaces, and a 309-space overflow car park. 
The parking areas were originally rather tight and narrow, but in 2013 they'd been expanded and a new exit was built. The next services in each direction are at Leeming Bar to the north and at Ferrybridge to the south. It lies at Junction 46, a fairly nondescript diamond junction typical of the UK motorway network. Ingmanthorpe sits within Kirkdeaton's boundaries to the west of the A1M. It lies on a dead-end road and has, at best, just a handful of houses. However, don't be fooled by this, Ingmanthorpe has some interesting bits of historical interest. For starters, the Grand National winning jockey Richard Guest used to train racehorses at Ingmanthorpe stables until he was evicted in 2021. Furthermore, between 1945 and 1976, Ingmanthorpe Hall was occupied by Wennington School, founded by the Quaker educationalist Kenneth C. Baker in Lonsdale, Lancashire in 1940. It was a co-educational and ultimately progressive boarding school. After World War II, the school relocated to Ingmanthorpe and it stayed here until its closure. Ingmanthorpe Hall was also used in some episodes of the TV series The Darling Buds of May too. See, it has quite a lot. We start our main walk at the church, easily the biggest and most important landmark the village has. It's this that gives the village the first half of its name. After all, Kirk is an old word for church. Dedicated to All Saints, this sits at the highest point of the village on the site of an earlier church. Its oldest stonework dates from between the 12th and 14th centuries and a thorough restoration was undertaken in 1849. All of the stained glass here is Victorian. Patronage of the church was held by the Roos family from Ingmanthorpe until the Reformation. At that point, it passed through the hands of other families until 1794, when it was purchased by the Bishop of Ripon, James Geldart. From the churchyard, you can clearly see Kirkdeaton Hall, a fine Grade II listed 18th century house, likely second only here to the church in terms of stature. The spire atop All Saints Tower, by the way, is octagonal and reaches a height of 100 feet, that's 30.5 metres for all you that prefer the metric system. Among its long list of incumbents is Dr. Myra Shackley, who was the reverend here between 2009 and 2015. We exit the churchyard via the big gates that adorn its southern edge, and next we head out onto Main Street briefly towards Mark Lane. Now, as we know, Yorkshire folk love a bit of cricket. Kirk Deaton can provide even the most ardent Yorkshiremen with leather and willow. This is Kirk Deaton Cricket Club, who play in the Nidderdale and District Amateur Cricket League that spans the Nidderdale area. For the 2024 season, which begins later this year, Kirk Deaton will host two senior teams and three junior teams in the league. So this definitely is one of the places to come if you enjoy a bit of cricket in the summertime. After the Cricket Club, Mark Lane passes the road junction to Ingmanthorpe, but next, we're after the A168. The A168 is part of the former Great North Road, the channel's most frequently talked about turnpike. It bypasses the village to the east and brings us to Scrifton Lane. This is a nursery called Cub, the first of its kind in the north of England. It focuses on an arts-inspired curriculum that draws on pioneering theorists including Maria Montessori and Reggio Emilia. Spanning more than 10,000 square feet, it features five contemporary playrooms designed using Scandinavian pastel colours. Outside the building is a milepost, a reminder of the days of the Great North Road. After a short amble down Scrifton Lane, we're on Weatherby Road now. That bus that's just past us is the number 8. Kirk Deaton is served by that route, which connects Harrogate to Weatherby, as well as the X80, which runs between Weatherby and Knaresborough. Walk a bit further towards Weatherby and you'll find the brand new Village Hall. The site this stands on was previously occupied by an old community centre built in the 1970s. With asbestos as a concern, it was deemed unserviceable and subsequently demolished, to be replaced by this in September 2013. 
Get your Harrogate lists out all because you can tick off Kirk Deaton thanks to the parish notice board here on the wall. 22 down. As you leave the little cul-de-sac in which the hall sits, you'll pass by Bar Field. Here is another sports club, this time football. Kirk Deaton Rangers play their home games here, an FA Charter standard club for boys and girls aged between 3 and 18. Their teams participate in a variety of leagues across Harrogate, Wharfdale and the Nidderdale areas. Bar Field has some of the best facilities in Yorkshire for junior football too, apparently. Alright, so we're about halfway around. We turn around at this point and we head straight back up the main street to the church and that's really all that's left here in Kirk Deaton. It's not a, a very big place by any stretch of the imagination and it's one of those places that I feel is not excessive. You know, you're not going to get lost by going down some strange country lane that'll lead you into the middle of nowhere. It's not like that at all. It's all clustered together despite the fact it's a linear village. So let's head up the main street and finish this one off. Halfway up Main Street is the only village pub, the Bay Horse. This was originally two pubs though until they were converted into just one. They were named the Bay Horse and the Greyhound and it seems it was the former that won the eventual naming rights. If you head down Limekiln Lane, the street beside the pub, which by the way is a nod to former industrial activity in the area, you'll find this charming little building. That's a former Methodist chapel which has now been lovingly converted into a private house. I have though no date for its construction. Back to Main Street and even though we've already covered bus services, the next landmark is that bus shelter on the other side of the road. The reason this is notable is to do with the plaque on its interior wall. It was built in 1953 in commemoration of the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. From this point onwards the road starts to climb uphill, gently, back towards the church at the highest point of the village. It's all residential now, so here's a few examples of the housing at this point before we reach our final landmark next to All Saints, the old school. Kirk Deaton was endowed with a free school in 1791 by a gift in the will of Admiral Sir Hugh Palliser. It was rebuilt in 1846 and again in 1893, becoming a Church of England Voluntary Control Primary School. It closed in 1991 and the building is now a private residence. The closest primary school now is Deaton Gates in Weatherby. Palliser, by the way, was born in Kirk Deaton. He was a Royal Navy officer during both the Seven Years and the American Revolutionary Wars. The church bells were chiming as we reached the end point. What a lovely village Kirk Deaton is. And with the church bells ringing in our ears, that's the end of Kirk Deaton. Now there are two Deatons in Harrogate. If you go just to the north of Kirk Deaton, you'll find the second one. And I'll see you there next week. Yes, there are indeed two Harrogate villages with the name of Deaton. This is only half the story. Do come back next week to see the second part, if you will. Although the other Deaton twin is much smaller and with far less to talk about. Do you think that stopped me though? Did it heck? See you there. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.